Uh, hello. Can, uh, can everyone hear me all right? All right. Uh, my name is Michael Hoyer. I'm at uh, UC Berkeley uh, in a lab called the AMP Lab, although we're, we're now called the RISE Lab. Uh, mostly a, a computer science uh, research lab, but we also uh, work with uh, uh, lots of people in genomics. Uh, so the, this uh, project I wanna, I'm going to talk about today is called ADAM. Uh, it was presented, I believe, three years ago at BOSC for the first time. We've also had some subsequent presentations as well. Um, if you'd rather not listen to me and rather play with the code, you can get started by uh, installing. You can install from Homebrew. Uh, last year at the uh, BOSC uh, CodeFest, um, some folks helped me get uh, Atom installable via Bioconda, and of course one of the things that comes out of that is you get BioContainer Docker images uh, for free as well. And then here's a long list of uh, web resources. Uh, our uh, GitHub page, we do all our um, interaction with users on Gitter, uh, docs are in Read the Docs. Um, and I'll, I will upload the, the slides later, so this is available. <clears throat> All right, so here's our stack. So we, uh, the AMP Lab, its big claim to fame is development of uh, Apache Spark toolkit for uh, big data analysis. Um, we've built over the past five or six years uh, the set of libraries, the set of APIs called Atom. Uh, it sits on top of Spark. We like to think of Atom as, you know, your way of doing genomics on Spark. Um, so on top of uh, the Atom APIs, we have all sorts of different applications. Uh, the one in particular I'm gonna talk about today in this talk is called Cannoli, and that uh, builds on an API in Atom called the Pipe API. Uh, so what does uh, Atom bring to, to genomics? So on the left, we have all these uh, different flat file uh, data formats that you're probably all familiar with. Uh, we don't like to think of things in terms of flat files. We like to think of, of things in uh, schemaed uh, objects, so in terms of sequences, reads, reference, aligned reads, et cetera. And so we bring uh, the data from these flat files into uh, an efficient distributed representation. Um, on disk, that would be something called Parquet. Uh, and Parquet has sort of two advantages. One is that it's a columnar store, so you get uh, compression um, per each column in what makes sense for compressing that column. Uh, the other thing is, that makes it efficient for distributed computing is that the data are partitioned on disk. Uh, that way you can read and write concurrently to the different partitions uh, in parallel across all the executor nodes on your cluster. Uh, and so Atom uh, supports a few different ways of uh, representing these data types uh, in Spark. Um, so sort of the Spark version one uh, main model was something called an RDD. Uh, so if you're going that route, um, the, the data in flat file would be represented as Avro uh, Java objects in RAM written out to disk as part K. Uh, the newer uh, models in Spark are data sets and data frames. If you're uh, working in, uh, in data sets, you get type Scala products. If you're working in, in data frames, you get sort of just untyped rows. Um, <clears throat> and then for uh, doing range queries, we can also add um, uh, genomic range partitioning to the data on disk. So not only will the data be partitioned uh, across your cluster, but um, all data in specific genomic ranges can be uh, co-partitioned together for efficient uh, compute. And then the API I was gonna talk about today uh, is a pipe API. So when you pull any of those uh, flat file um, data sets uh, into Spark, uh, you end up with uh, what we call a genomic data set. Um, this pipe API lets you take that partition data and stream it out to an external application uh, over a pipe. And so we have uh, ways of formatting to and from the external process. Uh, and by using this pipe API, you can actually um, scale up larger than a single node. You can scale up to the total number of executor nodes you might have on your cluster. And uh, so in Atom, uh, if you were to write some Scala code in sort of an interactive fashion, to use the pipe API, it would look something like this. You need to specify your in and out uh, formatters. You give the command line here where 
talking about BWA, so that would be streaming data out in early fast queue, receiving it back in SAM. Uh, but this API is a little bit ugly, so we've written uh, another library called uh, Cannoli. So Cannoli wraps a bunch of uh, bioinformatics tools. It provides some additional features, uh, such as being able to run these tools in Docker or Singularity sort of transparently, and it handles mounting of shared data to those uh, Docker images. And so with the Cannoli API, uh, we now have a much sort of simpler API. Again, this is sort of your interactive Scala example. Uh, we load the paired reads, uh, set up some arguments for BWA, and just apply BWA as a function to those reads, and you get back uh, your aligned reads. Now you can also run Cannoli from the command line. Uh, similar here, the, the only downside to doing things this way is you're actually writing out to disk in between the various steps. All right, so here's a, a long list of contributors, and in fact, a lot of the, these people have moved since the last time we updated the slides, so that needs to be done. Uh, and I just wanted to, th uh, to thank you. Our GitHub for Cannoli itself uh, is up there, and then we'll have a de demo at, uh, at 3 p.m. today, DO6. Thank you.